Good afternoon, Dave Birch. I'm really excited to have you here. Corey Dorestein was so enthusiastic and <laughs> about you, and we're very happy that you're going to be our speaker at the National Bitcoin Conference uh, in the Netherlands on the June the 24th. Thank First, you. I know you as the writer of Identity is the New Money. You are very interested in how these two things are combined. I saw you giving presentations about what Bitcoin needs to be a success. And I know that you're working in all kinds of legacy industries, you know, financial industries to make them more innovative. But what is your background? You, you studied physics, right? Just like me. Uh, yeah, I was a physicist and, uh, and then I became a consultant. Uh, which I thought I would try for a couple of years until I could find the job I really wanted, what I wanted to do. Hmm. And it turned out consulting was the only thing I was good at. So I'm still doing it all these years later. Yeah, and you're basically a part of a big consultancy company who helps legacy companies to uh, innovate. Now well, Consult Hyperion isn't, isn't a big company. We're a, we're a niche player. We're specialists on secure electronic transactions. Okay. But there's uh, only 50 of us. We're not so big. Yeah. So it's a small, nice uh, boutique uh, experts uh, and, and you're uh, all, yeah, all over yeah. the world. You basically uh, fly to talk about the innovation in the, in the payment industry. Now, how do you take a, what do you think of this whole Bitcoin slash blockchain uh, technology, which seems to be a solution for everything? Well, I mean, I'm on the heretical side of things, right? So the blockchain believers will say that you can't separate the Bitcoin and the blockchain, that these are one and indivisible. Um, I'm on the other side of the fence. I think blockchain is a new category of technology. There are lots of different kinds of blockchains. Almost all of them haven't been invented yet. But the core idea of the blockchain, the peculiar mixture of transparency and privacy, uh, that mixture of security and openness, I think is a really interesting new solution to some old problems. Hmm. What are you going to talk about during the conference? Well, I, one thing that very much interests me at the moment is the different categories of problem that can be addressed by blockchain. In many places I go to, blockchain has become the magic unicorn that's going to fix everything. So oh, yeah, like, sure. Whatever sure. it is, the blockchain is going to fix it. That can't be right. So what I thought I would do is I'll give a few examples of different ideas that have been created for blockchain businesses and ask your, I mean, you have a very well-informed audience, I understand. So I think I'll give a few examples and then we'll have some discussions about which examples really make sense for the blockchain which are just crazy magic unicorn things. And I thought that would be very useful to have that kind of conversation with the technologists around so they can become part of it. Well, we have a very good informed uh, audience and some have no idea about the blockchain and some really know a lot. You know, so it's variation from the, the, the heads of technology to uh, the heads of uh, innovation. So we'll, um, but it will be a very good conversation. So it's nice that we can go into debate with you. Now, one last question. You over there have a bank, a central bank, the Bank of England, who says Bitcoin and blockchain can be as important for the financial industry as the internet is for the rest of the world. However, all the Bitcoin startups, I hear, can complain that they can't get a bank account. How is that possible? <laughs> that, that, that... Well, look, I think you have to have uh, a recognition of the fact that the regulatory side of banking uh, has its own pace mm. and it has its own uh, it has its own rules it has its own regulations so the know your customer anti money laundering counter terrorist financing all this kind of stuff uh, is very uncomfortable with bitcoin and the kind of pseudo anonymity that it provides so uh, so the fact that you comply with all the rules doesn't matter because the banks are just uncomfortable and they're uncomfortable because they for understandable reasons because they have no regulatory safe harbor you know if the, if a bank follows all of the rules it doesn't matter they could still be in trouble uh -huh. downstream so mm. i you know and the, by the way this isn't just to do with bitcoin mm. this is this is general you know you want to try open an account to send money to somalia yeah. in england at the moment you have the same problem so it's not about bitcoin it's about the way that the regulatory response has to evolve uh, alongside any technological changes. Thank you. David, Vasily in Amsterdam, we're going to have a great time. Great debate, great I'm really presentation. I'm looking forward to it. See you there. Thank you very See much. See you there.